Hero here for Ember Games with a review of Beyond Good and Evil HD. Played with Xbox 360 backward compatibility on Xbox One because the games with gold version made me. Beyond Good and Evil was originally intended to be a trilogy from what I've researched, but due to low sales it never happened. There's been a cult following for this game, and rumors keep surfacing over the years about a sequel. October 2016 though, Ubisoft finally confirmed Beyond Good and Evil 2 is in development. Beyond Good and Evil was originally released on PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and PC back in 2003, with the HD re-release coming 8 years later in 2011 to 360 and PS3. Now I've had it on regular Xbox for years, but just another game I had yet to get to. The planet of Hillis is at war with an alien known as the Doms, with a capital Z for some reason. A military force known as the Alpha Sections, with a lowercase s, has taken power in order to help maintain peace and order. Some rumors began that maybe the Alpha Sections aren't quite what they seem, and that's where your job begins. Taking control of photojournalist, only known by Jade, who fulfills her namesake by wearing green pants, green jacket, and green lipstick, you explore the nearby islands and factories looking to snap pictures of the Alpha and expose a conspiracy to the world. Beyond Good and Evil is an action-adventure game where combat takes place in real time with a pretty shaky and indecisive camera. Jade is best when it comes to stealth, though, and fortunately the Alpha sections all have oxygen tank weak points that can be kicked or shot with Jade's disc-shooting glove to disorient them, taking just one more kick to destroy them. The stealth overall is fairly solid. I did feel cheated a couple times in the execution of a stealth attack, and sometimes you weren't allowed to move the camera to see ahead of you or around corners properly, leading to being discovered unfairly. But all but a handful of situations lets you run back far enough to just wait out the sirens and hiding. In a few places are lasers that will capture you if you trigger a full alarm, which would restart you from the beginning of the room, lowering your current life to only four hearts. Jade also fights some wildlife and alien life forms using her bow staff, with a single attack button, a quick dodge button, and a flick of the left stick to choose the next target's direction. There are a couple of boss fights with mechanics that are pretty simple, but really satisfying to complete. There's also some vehicle combat, as Jade uses her Pig Uncle Page's hovercraft to navigate the local islands and cities. The hovercraft begins with a gun, but also obtains some neutralizer missiles that can lock onto three targets at once, purchased from the Jamaican Rhino People's garage, where upgrades can be purchased using pearls as currency. Pearls can be acquired in many ways, including boss fights, donations from citizens, hidden in restricted alpha sections areas, and also as a reward for photographing animals and creatures and submitting the pictures to the Hilly Science Center. There are 88 pearls what? total in the game, and the collection screen numbers each acquisition in a set okay. order, which gives you a little guidance on where you might have missed some. With the game being open world though, its chronological placement didn't always seem logical, but you can purchase a pearl detector which will show you the location of hidden pearls on your map. Jade is frequently accompanied by a computer-controlled companion that can perform various actions to allow access to things Jade couldn't do by herself. Her uncle Paige, the engineer for example, wields a wrench that can cut security screens, and Double H will charge barred doors. Both characters can be commanded to press buttons or give Jade a boost as well. You can also trigger Paige and Double H's special moves in combat, however if their life gets low, their death will end your game as well. Jade can build her life bar by finding PA1s that add another heart each. Your companions stay at a max of two hearts, but Jade can give them food which is easily purchased with credits at vending machines all over Hillis. Credits can be obtained from killing enemies, destroying giant crystals and crates, or win some of the minigames in which Jade can engage. Hovercraft races, the sort of air hockey thing, or finding a ball in a shell game. Credits are also awarded for the aforementioned wildlife photographs. Jade receives specific missions, which are marked on the map, but the collection of pearls to buy vehicle add-ons is also a required goal. Progress to optional areas is often barred by one of many keys obtained through the mission progression. The optional areas still pretty much all have to be covered because of the 88 pearls you need to acquire about 71 to complete the game. The mission sites require a decent amount of puzzle solving, moving boxes and switching fuses, and sometimes just figuring out where to go. Jumping is all contextual as in there's no button to just make you jump randomly, and if there's a box you can climb, it has you push the X button. Many ledges will be scaled just by pushing in their direction. In fact, attacking is contextual too. You can only swing your weapon when enemies are around, or kick them when the smaller life forms try to bite you. Even though it's not platforming, there are quite a few areas that require dexterity of ducking and running to avoid security lasers and detection. The musical score in Beyond Good and Evil provides one of the most unique ambient experiences I've recalled in recent years. 
When I stop and think about the composition diversity, it almost seems weird how it all works so well. With this Jamaican feel at the Rhino Garage, the mariachi music during the hovercraft race, some, I'm not even sure what to call it in the bar, and some great generic piano and strings as well as some synth tunes to round it all out. It's a shame that the voice acting wasn't what quite as well done. The dialogue was fun and snappy, but some lines were delivered like the actor wasn't quite sure what was going on or, you know, how someone would speak the line naturally. Be careful with those mutant anemones. Overall, though, I was pleasantly surprised with Beyond Good and Evil personally. really liked where the plot was going, even though I felt the payoff was a little weak. The goals to obtain the pearls are really diverse so no one mechanic gets old. The open world map lets you feel a bit of the freedom to explore as you wish and do optional things as you please. I got all but one pearl, I had missed photographing three creatures somewhere, found a ton of secrets and hearts, and completed the game in just under 10 hours. I can see what made the game such a cult hit though, and now that Ubisoft prides themselves on the open world game model, I'm curious to see where the upcoming sequel can take us. Rated as an action adventure title, Beyond Good and Evil hits a 64 out of 100 with 50 being an average game. This is Jiro for Umber Games, thanks for watching. Still trying to figure out why people complain about no games to play as I work through years of backlog. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and get notified what I dig up next, or follow me on Twitter, at Umber Games.